All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. It is Tuesday, May 15th. We have a full MLB slate to dive into in today's video, like we always do. We're going to go through each and every one of these games. I'm going to give you my lean on the side. I'll give you my lean on the total. Talk about any player props that we like within the game as well. But as always, guys, keep an eye on the pinned comment of this video for all of my final plays if you do want to fade me. And I would say in the last two days here, fade me has been a pretty damn good business model here um we only have one win in each of the last two days yesterday going one and four and what stinks and i don't mean to chuckle at it because i know you guys hate when i laugh when i lose um but the fact that we keep hitting our first bet and it feels like it's going to be a good day and then the rocks just come come uh, crumbling down seems a little comical to me but uh yeah not the uh, not the best uh, two day stretch here. So I think it's fair to say the heater is officially over. Not necessarily in the NBA, but in the MLB. I think I can uh, take that one on the chin. But um, nonetheless, guys, all my final plays will be in the pinned comment. The vibe doesn't necessarily turn around when we take a peek at the ride of the day from Parlay Killer. Had Josh Rojas to record a single. Uh, he doesn't even get on base, or maybe he had a walk or something. But uh, no singles for him. We share that womp womp, all right? All right, Parley Killer, that's not just on you because <laughs> we didn't have a good day collectively either. But nonetheless, guys, this is the ride of the day. If you don't know what the ride of the day is, just use hashtag ride of the day in the comments. Drop me an absolute banger of a pick. I'm begging you. We need some dubs here. I need some dubs. I got to afford the lights and stuff here, all right? The electricity is going to go out. Drop the hashtag ride of the day in the comments with an absolute banger of a pick. I'll be jumping on board with one person's pick, giving you a shout out in the next video win or loss also shouting you out over on my social medias make sure to go ahead and follow me there they're all rotating throughout the show if you win your uh, pick there and we ride with you we continue to ride with you until the brakes come off or until the wheels fall off whatever the saying is so use that hashtag ride of the day in the comments but yeah not the best spot for us yesterday. We look to bounce back today. Before we do get into the show, I wanted to say, guys, we have a Discord with over, I think, I want to say like over 6,500 people in there. It's completely free. I know a lot of people here on YouTube have a paid Discord and whatnot, which is, that's your business model. That's fine. But ours is completely free. It's just a bunch of uh, like-minded folks there talking about their plays and talking about sports all day long. I'll have a link for that in the pinned comment as well. Make sure to join that, guys. Uh, it's a really good time in there. Shout out to all the mods, especially Dennis um, in there as well. But yeah, I'm active in there or trying to be more active in there. But go ahead and join our Discord. If you know what a Discord is, it's pretty much just a massive online group chat with channels and whatnot uh, for specific topics to talk about. But uh, nonetheless, enough rambling. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Let's jump into game number one. We have a game that was postponed yesterday. Baltimore taking on Toronto. Still looks like there's going to be some weather concerns here. Um, 60 degrees, 65% chance of rain, um, over 10 mile an hour winds. So uh, hopefully they get this one in. I still do. Yesterday we leaned in the same matchup. Now I do think Toronto's pitcher is still up in the air. Yesterday it was Chris Bassett. I've also seen uh, Kikichi on uh, some websites here. So we'll keep an eye. I think Kyle Bradish is expected to start for Baltimore. Um, so we'll keep an eye on the pitcher. But if it's the same matchup as, as yesterday, uh, all my same theories kind of apply. I don't expect Bassett to have a great game against Baltimore. Even though Baltimore has kind of struggled last 30 days against right-handed pitchers. Coming off of a loss. Now with a postponed game, I think they're going to come in with a little bit of fire here. So I'll still lean towards Baltimore. I think you're getting a better price, which may indicate um, that it's not Bassett on the mound, who has very much struggled. It could be Kikichi, who's had a better year. But regardless, slight lean towards Baltimore here. A little weary of betting on a game that's been postponed, and all of a sudden the odds have moved um, you know, to, to get a way better price for Baltimore as well. So kind of a fishy situation, but we'll still lean in that direction. In terms of a total, I could see this being a 4-3 game even with uh, the, the weather in this spot. So I'm going to still lean towards the over, again, even though we have some weather. But given the fact that we have like a, a game that was postponed yesterday, we're in the same location. Um, they're trying to play it early today. Like uh, I, I don't necessarily know if we want to jump and race to the window to get this play in. But Baltimore in the over is going to be my lean. Next up, we have Detroit taking on Miami. This, I can't lie to you, is not my favorite uh, matchup of the uh, the slate here, and it hasn't been since the series uh, went underway. Uh, this is game number three. Um, both teams are moving on after this. We have Casey Mize on the mound for Detroit. Miami's starting Trevor Rogers, who has not had a very good start to the year. Mize is a 3.5 ERA with a 1.3 whip. Trevor Rogers 
6.57 ERA and a 1.9 whip. So we do have a little bit of a discrepancy when it comes to the pitching side of things. Um, and Detroit's bullpen also much better than Miami in this spot. Um, in terms of them being worn down and whatnot, their setup man and closer went yesterday. Their setup man should be fine. We're talking about laying here. Um, but J Jason Foley did pitch two of the last, actually two days straight. So he might not be good to go. But I don't really think that this is going to be a, a spot in which Detroit's going to need their closer. Uh, they should be able to bounce. They probably will need their closer, but rely on their closer in a sense. Uh, they probably should bounce back after a one nothing loss yesterday. They're minus 175 favorites. Like I said, not my favorite spot, but give me the favorite yet again. When it comes to the total here in this spot, um, I think I'm going to lean slightly, slightly to the over. Neither one of these pitchers, you know, blows the doors off anything. Um, but offensively, they're going to struggle, which, again, that's why I'm saying it's a slight lean towards the over. Um, I think that we could also consider maybe a Detroit team total over, uh, depending on what we can get that at. But, again, not to say two games in a row that I'm not racing to the window to the place these. It's probably a similar spot as last game. Next up, we have Milwaukee taking on Pittsburgh here. Milwaukee getting the dub yesterday, uh, so they've split the series so far. Today on the mound, we have Robert Gasser from Milwaukee, who looked like a stud in his first start of the season. I don't want to act like the guy is, you know, the second coming or anything, um, but, you know, zero earned runs through how many innings did he pitch? We have it right up here. Uh, he pitched six innings of two hit baseball, zero earned runs, four Ks, 13 pitches per inning. So pretty damn good, albeit against the Cardinals. But I'm not going to sit here and act like Pittsburgh isn't like, you know, or Pittsburgh is way, 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 way better than the Cardinals. Definitely probably a little bit better of um, an offense. But overall, uh, Pittsburgh has Martin Perez or Martin Perez on the mound uh, today, who's having a decent season. He has some good spots, some bad spots. His last couple starts, uh, not all that great. And overall, like I would say that when he started the season hot, it was kind of, I don't want to say a facade, but uh, he's definitely had more meh starts than good starts as of late. So I think I lean towards Milwaukee in this spot. I don't like the price tag whatsoever. Uh, so that's kind of a bummer there. But if you can get this in terms of Milwaukee, first five innings um, minus one, Point five, so first five innings run line and get it at plus 100. That may be the move here. I just don't know if we can full like Milwaukee hasn't looked all that great offensively. Um, and now they're going up against, you know, a left handed pitcher in which that's not their strong side. Uh, they do hit sinkers really well and change ups and cutters really actually no sinkers and cutters really well, which are going to be uh, Perez's pitches. So maybe that's a spot in which we can lean. Um, but I think overall, one play that I could consider in this, and it is a high line, uh, so don't get me wrong here, but considering taking a peek at uh, Martin Perez over five and a half hits allowed, you can see he's literally done it in nine of his last 10 games and in seven of his eight starts, uh, San Francisco being the only team that didn't get there. And his last two starts against Colorado and the Angels, not the best offenses, um, you know, eight and eight. We look at Milwaukee against left-handed pitchers again. They kind of struggle. They strike out more. Their averages drop. So that's my concern. I talked about that. Um, but overall, this could be a decent spot for my near even odds for a pitcher to kind of collapse. Uh, something we're considering. But again, if this was four and a half, I think I'd be all over it, obviously. But it's five and a half. So I'm not exactly sure if we want to run and pull the trigger there. And guys, if you do want to check out that app, we'll jump right back into it. This is called Outlier. I'll have a link in the pinned comment. Seven days free. It is an amazing player prop research tool. Uh, you can see here, you can literally go through every single player prop offered on the market. Sort by last five, last 10, last 20, head to head this season um you like something you like the odds you can kind of dig in and say okay let's take a peek head to head last 20 see what we got here you can look down um at their matchup versus the pitcher matchup versus that hand matchup versus these pitches really really cool they also have all these insights for games and trends as well so check out the link in the pinned comment if you do want access to this it's seven days free with that link no code needed just the link what's great about it if you want to stick to the standard membership which everything i just showed you is standard right i think it's uh, outlier pro is what it's called um $19.99 per month after that. Like, what a good price tool. What a great priced tool. So go ahead and check it out. That link will be in the pinned comment. Go check it out, Liar. You'll literally never look back. We've never heard a bad review or anything about uh, telling someone to go check this out, and then they check it out. It's an amazing app. It's for desktop and mobile, by the way. They have a mobile app. All right, next up, White Sox taking on Washington. I know I said yesterday I was I didn't want to pull trigger on, on Washington, but I got damn close. They ended up winning that game number one, but uh, the doubleheader kind of took me away from it. So uh, no dice there, unfortunately. Uh, what I'll say about this game is Garrett Crochet is on the mound for the White Sox. 
I've been liking his pitching, and he's going up against a Washington offense that isn't all that great today. Uh, and Patrick Corbin's on the mound for Washington, who is a bigger name, I guess, than, than Gary Crochet, but definitely not as good of a pitcher. The problem here and, and my concern overall would be that I can't take the White Sox at minus 142. Like, I think the White Sox win this game. I like their spot, but you're taking one of the worst offenses and just overall, obviously, one of the, you know, non-premium teams in the league and taking a peek at them and saying, hey, you're 13 and 30. Now I'm going to bet on you minus 142. Uh Uh-uh. So... It's a lean. I definitely can't get to the Washington side of things. With Patrick Corbin on the mound, that plus 120 doesn't scream like electricity to me either. Uh, So I do lean Washington, but I don't think I can get to the line. Uh, (laughs) Tough slate so far. And again, like based on how we've been betting, right? We're like two and whatever, you know, a million in our last two days betting the MLB. MLB. So if you're thinking, wow, these are a lot of non-confident leans or stuff. No, like I'm waiting for spots that I love to dive into. When you get in a hole, like we've been in the last two days in the MLB, you don't want to dig out of it. You want to just lift yourself out of it. You know what I mean? Like you do not want to say, okay, well now we need to bet 20 games uh, to be able to get out of this. No, no, no more conservative will pay off in the long run. So hopefully you guys take that to heart because uh, that's exactly what we're doing here. I'm telling you, I lean this way. I don't think it really passes that threshold to be a bet for me, but I still do think, you know, if you love it, and I guess if it helps that uh, the dummy in the room, me, um, says I like it too, then maybe it helps push you along. But yeah, we're waiting for opportunities that we absolutely love here. In terms of uh, the total here in this spot, I think a slight lean uh, would go towards the under. Like I said, both offenses aren't all that great. And then you throw in the fact that Crochet's now maybe he can hold them down. So I could could get down with the under, but uh, that's probably the only confident thing I have in this game overall. Arizona taking on Cincinnati. We have Brandon Fdat on the mound for Arizona going up against Andrew Abbott here. Um, Both pitchers have definitely had some, you know, I guess you could say shining moments here. Uh, Andrew Abbott has been letting up a decent amount of runs, but not like a crazy amount. Uh, Same thing with Fat. So I guess you have two pitchers that should give you like middle of the road baseball, but not very. Like I don't don't expect blow up spots from either either of these guys, I should say. So I think my immediate lean goes towards the under. My one concern here, and if we dive into the dashboard, by the way, guys, this is now um, for now. We can bring it back free and stuff for for others at some point. But this is now a ballers only, which are the members on the channel uh, tool that comes out every single day and updated every single day. So if you are interested in this, make sure to become a channel member. There's a join button next to the subscribe button. And then there's also a join to become a baller somewhere in the description. Just uh, check it out. So $2.99 a month. So it's definitely not uh, it's not all that expensive to get access to this every single day. But nonetheless... The one thing that concerns me about taking it under is Arizona. We always talk about them going up against left-handers. Like, they are a very good team last 30 days here against left-handed pitchers. So that could concern me. But that's also what's going to lead me to uh, taking a peek at Arizona on the money line. So I go, in terms of ranking what I like here, the under in this game overall, though I wish it was nine like it has been, um, and taking a peek at Arizona on the money line. Uh, Cincinnati winning yesterday, Arizona winning game number one. Uh, I could totally see this being a a spot in which Arizona at home takes takes two of these first three games or these three games um, overall. I don't necessarily think that both pitchers are going to put on a master class though. So don't go thinking I'm, I'm looking at Fats uh, outs or his strikeouts. No, I just think that, you know, Cincinnati's offense isn't all that good. We should have a little bit of an edge offensively for Arizona, which is a slight lean to money line, but I still do like the under. um, If these guys can get through, you know, five innings each, I think that sixth gets a little bit dicey though. All right, next up, we have Seattle taking on Kansas City. Brian Woo on the mound for Seattle going up against Alec Marsh. Um, my main play in this game, so I wanted to go full game under. I did, um, but I don't love that seven and a half. I understand that, you know, it's, it's a fair number with uh, the way these guys are pitching. Brian Wu had a decent first outing of the year against Oakland, and Alec Marsh has had a few, what, three good starts in a row, right? Um, yeah, his last three starts has a combined one earned run, and you could be like, oh, not against good offenses. Well, Baltimore's in there. He went five and two-thirds, zero earned runs. Then he faced Toronto, who is a decent offense, right? Um, four and a third, zero earned runs. Then he faced off against the Angels, um, five and a third, one earned run. So giving Alec Marsh his flowers here. Um, and Wu came in against against Oakland in his first start. Um, only let up one hit, zero earned runs, three Ks, uh, 14 pitches per inning. So I'm going to give the pitchers their flowers here. Um, and instead of going full game under, 
I think I look towards the first um, five innings under four and a half. So we just have to average under one run per inning and we can cash this. Right now you can get that at minus 125 over on MGM. So I do like that spot more than I think the total under. Um, we do see some issues from uh, Kansas City's bullpen here and there, and their setup and closer should not be pitching today just based on uh, workload overall. Seattle's uh, bullpen should be good to go, and they have a really good bullpen. So if you still, or, or if you only have access to the full game under, it's not something I'm going to sit here and tell you uh, that I hate. I think you can get that for plus money right now, too. So there's your value if you want to kind of risk it a little bit more. But I like the under um, four and a half, first five under in this game. And if I had to take a side, um, I think I would lean towards Seattle. Their, their offense is a little bit better against righties than Kansas City's is. Uh, last 30 days here, eighth best average, sixth best WRC, sixth best WRC plus. Say that 82 times quick. Um, eighth in on base percentage, seventh in OPS, eighth in slugging, and eighth in ISO. So I do think that they have a little bit of an edge there offensively, but the pitch mix for Alex Marsh aren't really the pitches that Seattle crushes. So kind of want to just keep that in mind and give you all sides of the story, okay? I'd still lean Seattle money line, but I think my main lean and what we could end up rolling with in this spot is going to be the under four and a half, first half, first five innings in this spot. All right, San Diego taking on Colorado. I just do not even want to touch this game. We've bet San Diego two different ways the last two games, right? Two days ago, we took them over four and a half. Um, team total, they finished with four. Yesterday, we took them minus 0.5 on the first five. They don't cash that. Now they're going up against a lefty in which they are one of the worst teams overall um, in the last 30 days batting against lefties. Like, check this out. Where there's so much red all around here. So you wonder why is that total at seven and a half? Well, here it is because you have Michael King and Austin Gomber on the mound. It's not like those are two, you know, masterclass Cy Young type pitchers. So the reason being these offenses should struggle and you still have San Diego at, you know, minus 250. I think this could be a spot in which we consider, um, you know, Colorado plus one and a half. But boy, oh boy, if I ever bet on Colorado, there's something wrong in the head. So I lean towards Colorado plus one and a half because... San Diego's burned us, you know, a couple times here. Uh, and the fact that, you know, we have an offense that just does not touch lefties. Uh, seems like it could be a, a, a tough spot overall here in Austin Gomber, though. I think that that guy is like two pitches away from working at Burger King. Um, still a lefty, right? You can't change that. So uh, I'll take I'll take the, uh, the, the Rockies in a lean. In terms of a total, I, I just can't get behind these offenses. Sound of the psycho alert alarm for this game. I'm going to go Rockies plus one and a half and the under seven and a half. That sounds stupid and crazy all at the same times. But, you know, what else is new here? I also don't mind, like, um, taking a peek at somewhat of an Austin Gomber-like play because I think he's going to get – I don't know what his lines are for strikeouts or outs, but, like, I could see his lines because it's San Diego's offense and they had been uh, good against righties, which this series they haven't looked good. Um all of a sudden, they face a lefty. Maybe books don't catch up to that, but they probably have. But maybe consider some Austin Gomber success, which I should double the psycho alert alarm for that. All right, Phillies taking on the Mets, our lone winner of the day. Uh, we had the Phillies' first five minus a half. Or actually, Phillies' first five, yeah. Was it money line or minus a half? Whatever it was uh, yesterday cashed for us. And we have Joey Lucchesi on the mound for or Lucchesi, however you say his name, for the Mets, making his first big league start here, um, going up against Ranger Suarez, who has had a pretty damn good year for the Phillies. This one's fairly simple in my mind, but knowing my luck as of late, we're the ultimate jinx here. Um, but I feel like we've been the Philly whisperer. You hear that? I think we're going to go Philly's first five run line, minus .5 today as well. Um, this kid could come in and obviously pitch really, really well. Uh, he had 2.58 ERA and a 1.13 whip um, in the minors. But uh, I do think that this could be – this is, by the way, his first big league appearance of the season, not his big league debut debut. I think he's like – I think he's actually pretty old. Um, so excuse me there. Um, so I think that they should be able to get to him overall. I think he's probably first – where did he – is his first big league appearance? I think he played – I think he has, has pitched in the big leagues um, before. But uh, either way, um, I do think that this is a spot for the Phillies uh, to be able to get out hot again in terms of uh, what they're doing here. They're going up against a lefty, 10th best average um, in the last 30 days here, 8th best WRC+, 8th OBP, uh, OPS 8th. But when you look at it when they're at home, check this out right here. When they're at home in the last 30 days, they literally crush lefties. So Phillies minus 0.5 in the first five is going to be a play that we can almost book it to be a final play because, again, we've 
I think we've only lost, and you guys might know better than me. I got to look back at my records here, but somehow you guys keep a better record of my plays than me. Um, I think we've only lost like one or two Phillies' first five plays all year, and it's been one of our most common plays. So remember, Phillies. Philly whisperer. Um, in terms of a total of seven and a half, I didn't know where to come out on this because I do think the Phillies could have some offensive success. I just showed you the numbers. Um, but I also think that Ranger Suarez is going to be able to pitch against a Mets team that stinks against um, lefties, right? So I think I still lean under, and I could see this being like a 4-2, even a 5-2 game would stay under, right? So I definitely like Philly's first five more than uh, the total, but I think I slightly lean towards the under overall. Next up, we got the Red Sox taking on the Rays here. Uh, Red Sox take a uh, take a victory yesterday, walking off five to four here against Tampa Bay today. Tanner Houck's on the mound, who has had a couple rough-ish starts in a row um, against Minnesota, who at the time was batting really well. Then against Washington, which I don't know if we can really make an excuse about that. He did pitch seven innings, um, but nonetheless, I do think that you know, Taj Bradley on the mound should be fair competition. Um, only one start this season. And though I don't want to put much weight into one start, it was against the Yankees. He went six innings pitched, seven strikeouts, 15 pitches per inning, and just one earned run on four hits. So I think we got to give him a little bit of credit here. Um, he has decent numbers. Last couple starts against the um, against the Red Sox, uh, five innings pitched, 2.5 earned runs, seven Ks on average. Um, hasn't let up a home run. Whereas Tanner Houck's numbers, last three against Tampa Bay, uh, seven hits allowed, 4.3 earned run. Um, he's allowed a home run in two of those three starts. It's a little bit worse, but I think we can all agree Tanner Houck hasn't looked as good as he's looked this season um, in his career, right? A 2.24 ERA, a .97 whip, a 2.16 FIP. So I'll take the Red Sox, who also are batting in the last 30 days, um, a better better against right-handed pitchers. Just hoping that Houck can kind of uh, keep it together here uh, and keep the train moving on a good season. So give me them on the money line here. In terms of the total, we're looking at an eight right now. Uh, the way this series has panned out, it's kind of right in between that, right? Eight in game number one. Um, yesterday, nine. I think with the pitching on the mound, I'm going to lean towards the under. And then I have kind of a correlated player prop here. Um, we're going to take a peek at... At, um, uh, Jaron Duran here under one and a half total bases. You can get that for plus 100 over on DraftKings. So keep in mind, this is a plus money play. He hasn't hit this uh, in three straight games, and he hasn't hit it in five of his last six games here. What I like about this is the fact that Taj Bradley, obviously just a short sample size here, but batting average against for left-handed batters, 111, slugging 111. Um, and if we go through the pitches, J uh, J Jaron Duran's K percentage drops against fastballs. His cutter, his Woba drops. The splitter, um, his Woba drops as well, as well as his K percentage raises, uh, rises. Um, same thing with the uh, the curveball. You know, his Woba drops there too. So it's not necessarily his best pitch mix. So though I like the kid, and I think he's one of the best young guys in the Sox. Um, under one and a half bases for plus money could be a final play of ours today for sure. I almost forgot. I almost forgot to show this. So we got a bunch of comments yesterday saying, hey, put what you said in. Uh, I said, you know, uh, rear view mirrors are smaller than windshields for a reason. And people are like, put that on a T-shirt. So we did. We made things happen and got this created pretty damn quick. But rear view versus windshield T now live over on FadeMe.store. Just go to FadeMe.store. New arrivals. You'll find it. We have it in black, red, in true navy, um, violet, as well as kind of a light green here. Just says Fade Me on the front. The back says rear view mirrors are smaller than windshields for a reason. Had to give that a quick shout out because uh, right when I said it, I was like, that's <laughs> it's it that sounds cool and then everyone in the comments not everyone but a bunch of you guys in the comments were like let's get that on a t-shirt so uh yeah go check it out if you want fade dot store use code mirror for 20 percent off that tee all right, yesterday, we got Atlanta and Chicago here, the Cubs. Yesterday, we almost also pulled trigger on Cubs money line. Like I said in my video, I was like, is there a path to the Cubs here? Uh, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I didn't. Um, there's a avoided little bullet avoided there because it could have been even worse of a betting night for us as they lose 7 nothing. Uh, today, we have Charlie Morton on the mound for Atlanta going up against Javier Carne Asada for the Cubs. Uh, right now, I think Atlanta's priced out, but it probably would be my side to lean on. Um, I don't like what I've seen out of Chicago offensively this series. 
They haven't scored a run yet, okay? So either they're due or they're in a little bit of a slump. Um, but I don't think it gets them much easier here uh, against Charlie Morton, who's going to throw a lot of fastballs. They don't hit those well. Going to throw a lot of changeups. They do not hit those well. Going to throw sinkers. They do not hit those well. So uh, for a team that is struggling bottom 10 in virtually every offensive category over the last 30 days, I don't see them having much success here. Um, Atlanta... Struggles against right-handed pitchers, but they're a lot better at home, and that's where they are today. So uh, I do think that, like I said, this is kind of priced out at this point at minus 170. Um, but Atlanta would be my lean if you're a parlayer or something like that. You want to throw it in a parlay. Um, in terms of a total, I'd lean towards the under again because neither one of these offenses, according to the numbers, should have an amazing game, right? And you have two pitchers that are more than capable on the mound here. Like, I'm impressed by um, Carne Asada this season, and he's allowed five runs in his last four starts, uh, or four runs in his last five starts, cumulative, right? And Charlie Morton, um, his last four starts, he's allowed five. So the, both these guys are doing pretty damn well as of late. And Morton's pitching deep into games. I think in his last four games here, he's averaging like six and a half innings or six and two thirds. So uh, shout out to him there. I, I think that both these pitchers could have a decent game today, but me saying that it's like, well, you know, what's going to happen right now. We're going to have like a 10 to 12 game uh, just because Ev decided to say, Hey, let's look at an under, but I still do like the under in this spot overall. All right, Minnesota taking on the New York Yankees. This is one of our L's yesterday. We had the over in this game, and part of me wants to run it right back just due to the fact that we're looking at um, two really good pitchers on the mound, but the total didn't drop as much as I wanted. You have Pablo Lopez on the mound for Minnesota and then Stroman on the mound for the Yankees. I'm not trying to say that Stroman's had a really good year so far, but he's Marcus Stroman. Like, obviously he has the talent there. Um, and one great thing, I guess, in terms of our lean here, because I do think that we want to pull the trigger potentially on the Yankees. They're eligible to return today from the do not bet list. They've been on there for 15 days. So, um, we may pull trigger on Yankees money line just because, like I said, I do think Marcus Stroman has the talent, um, and the odds you're getting to be able to, you know, back these Yankees bats just make sense to me at plus 110. So, um, it's really like an offensive thing. Like, I'm not trying to tell you Pablo Lopez is fadeable or he should be faded or anything like that. Um, I almost just want the contrarian pick here for the over. And then, like I said, to get plus money behind these Yankees bats uh, is something that's definitely enticing to me. They've scored uh, 15 runs in the last two games uh, overall, and they're just hitting really well right right-handed pitchers third in average um third in wrc plus fifth in k rate fifth in base on ball third in both obp and ops iso fourth slugging third minnesota also hitting righties very well as well right so i don't i'm not sitting here being like hey this is a spot in which uh you know minnesota is going to stink it up but what i will say is we always look for minnesota against fastballs right marcus Str uh, marcus stroman only throwing 4.2 percent fastballs he's throwing almost 50 percent sinkers third worst in the league in terms of runs above average for Minnesota. So I think this could be a Yankee spot, but it's going to be damn tough to get that to the, the uh, you know, on the books because Pablo Lopez is straight up a beast, right? So um, we might just lean towards the over because I do think if the Yankees get to Lopez, uh, that's obviously going to help their chances of winning, but I don't necessarily see Stroman like absolutely dwarfing the, the Minnesota offense. So slight lean towards the over and then a slight lean towards the Yankees just because we're getting plus money behind those bats. Uh, Texas taking on the Guardians. Um, so far, Guardians have dominated the series. 7-0, seven 7-4. Uh, they are huge underdogs today, mostly due to the fact that Carlos Carrasco's on the mound. Um, and Carlos puts the ass in Carrasco. Uh, and the los, as in loss. Um, 5.3 ERA, 5.4 ERA this season. 1.5 whip, a FIP of 5.3. Going up against John Gray, who... I remember when he made it, he kind of started the season late, right? He only has, I think he might actually have a decent amount of starts under his belt now, but I was like, I'm not really sure about him and blah. The dude's been pitching really well. The problem is he lets guys get, he lets up a decent amount of hits. Um, they don't come in and he's striking out a lot of guys. So I think that that's part of it. Like when he lets a lot of guys on base, right? He then is, I don't know the stats behind this, but like strikeouts with guys on base or runners in scoring position too. The dude's been very good at that. So I think I back Texas here. I don't think that they just get mollywopped in three straight games. And you have Carrasco on the mound. Uh, should be a spot in which uh, they should be able to get to him. He has 58 plate appearances here um, against this current Texas roster. 235 average, but an expected batting average of 280. Expected Woba 360. Expected slugging of 460. Texas should be able to put up a few runs against him today. Um, and John Gray, I hope, can hold his own. The total's up at nine. If this was eight, I probably would tell you it's a 5-4 type of a game for Texas. So I'm going to lean 
leaning towards the over because, again, my floor was almost 5-4. But, again, I kind of wish this was at 8 or 8.5. But good luck getting a line like that when Carrasco's on the mound. You know what I mean? So give me Texas as well as a slight lean towards the over. But I honestly do think we could pull trigger on Texas here today. Um, or I, I would have thought we could pull trigger on Texas here today. But at their price, it's like they've just gotten stomped two games in a row. Uh, and now they're almost minus 160 on some books. Like uh, you could still get them at minus 150, which is maybe the farthest I'd play that over on ESPN bet. But they're almost getting priced out at this point. And on most books, they are priced out. All right, guys, if you're still watching at this moment, go ahead and comment good vibes in the comments because I think we need some good vibes heading into today. Um, our last two MLB days, I mean, I'm here to own it and even chuckle at it because we're not betting enough to, you know, legitimately lose the lose the lights or the electricity, and neither should you. So you can, if you're smart about sports betting and the amount you're putting on games and, and doing it long term, like, you can have losing days. You know what I mean? It's okay. So call me good vibes because we need some good vibes going into this uh, this this slate here. We got the Astros taking on Oakland. Fairly simple, I guess, in my mind here. Uh, this is Framber Valdez against Aaron uh, Brooks, who I don't know too, too much about. Um, in fact, let's see if we can get a quick snippet on him um, here. Uh, so... Call, he's from AAA. Um, he's going to start Wednesday's game. As we know, there's so many injuries. Yeah, there's a bunch of injuries on Oakland, which that's what I would have assumed here. Um, but overall, I do think that this is obviously a Houston game. The problem being, like, the odds are crazy, right? Minus 250. So maybe this is another sort of parlay piece. And I would not be surprised if Houston uh, gets to the rookie here either. So uh, I'm going to lean towards the over because I think that this line is a little bit low. And honestly, uh, Houston scored nine runs in game number one of this series, and then just two yesterday. Uh, and that was a, a spot in which, you know, I would have assumed they would have scored more. So maybe there's some still in the backlog. So give me the over as well as Houston on the money line. Uh, nothing else major that I'm considering this game uh, other than potentially for Amber Valdez uh, strikeouts, but I think it's a very high number, which uh, I don't love that. Um, yeah, plus 112. And look at it, it's it's it gets pretty ugly when you look at what he's done lately. Like that is eight straight games. He's gone under the mark. But last time he faced Oakland, he had 10 strikeouts. And this is a team that's striking out a decent amount on the season. Um, based on ball decay rate, so they're not going to walk, which could be a concern of his, right? Uh, so maybe maybe we lean towards the over there. That is a that is a plus 112 number over on FanDuel. So don't get don't sit here being like, I'm loving the over uh, strikeouts. No, it's just a, it's a decent plus money for a good pitcher against a bad team, or at least, um, you know, a, a pitcher that is, I don't want to say getting better, but he has had some rocky starts here. Um, but obviously, he's kind of turning uh, that around overall. I think his, his second to last start, he got shelled, but then kind of reeled it in against Detroit. But nonetheless, for plus money, that would be something I consider, as weird as it may sound. I think Oakland can strike out a lot against him. All right, Angels taking on St. Louis. I really don't know where to come out on this game, so... Keep that in definite mind as we're talking about this. I think overall I would lean towards the Angels just because it's plus money. But again, like that is me saying uh, that being one of the only reasons. I think that they have maybe a little bit more offensive consistency. But even that, I'm kind of like splitting the hairs to get there, right? Um, but Lance Lynn on the mound for St. Louis, he doesn't scare me. Griffin Canning on the mound for uh, the Angels does scare me. So maybe there's a little look at a potential over here because we're going to have nine innings to hit this. Like, neither bullpen is all that great. Neither pitcher is all that great. Um, but the offenses do worry me a little bit. But give me the Angels because they're plus money. And then a slight lean towards the over. One positive it would be the score yesterday I uh, was it a seven to six game yesterday so uh, that's good to see and then game number one I forget it was like 10 to, to something like we saw a big game um, there too so maybe you know those sort of trends continue and the batters are liking what they're seeing here in this spot so over and then also that that angels on the money line but I guess if if I needed to make a play on this game I'd just send it with the over and and, and pray that it hits but hopefully that's not the type of vibe we're heading into these these games with I'd, so weird one here. We're still waiting on the, the definite pitcher for the San Francisco and Dodgers game, but I was looking at one site and <laughs> I saw, I see Tyler Glasnow on the mound. I was like, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever because uh, the Dodgers are also only minus 135. So I was like, huh. And Glasnow, I think, pitched, what, three days ago? I don't think it's going to be him. I think that that could be incorrect because I haven't found that anywhere else. Um, even when I look at some of the player props just for this game, I'm having trouble finding uh, who's pitching, but we do know that Logan Webb is on the mound uh, for the uh, San Francisco Giants here, so maybe that's why it's pulling back, but I think that this could be a chance, uh, honestly, to snag the Dodgers at a low price, even if 
you know, say it's a, you know, a, a no name pitcher or something on the mound. Their offense, six runs and 10 runs so far uh, in this series. Now, Logan Webb, yes, a little bit of a different beast, but he's got almost 200 plate appearances against the current roster of the Dodgers. 345 average with a 530 expected slugging. Like, that's not all that great. Uh, but one other sort of scared thing that I would want to keep an eye on is making sure that all of the bats are going to be in the Dodgers lineup. Right now, we see um, Betts, Otani, Freeman, Smith, Muncy, Hernandez, Outman, Pages, and Lux as the starting lineup, so that's good, right? Um, but overall, I do want to make sure that we're looking at you know the correct, I guess you could say, um, batters here. So give me whoever's on the mound for the Dodgers. Getting them at minus 135, I think, is like a, a price steal. Regard like I could pitch for the Dodgers, and hopefully they can give me 10 runs of run support. You know what I mean? Uh, which also kind of leads me right into an obvious um, play here in terms of a, a total. Uh, I like the over as well. I think that this could be a spot in which uh, we see you know a decent amount of um, runs. But we're not the Dodgers whisperer here. But uh, again, I do think that they could score runs um, even off Logan Webb, who's a good pitcher. But like I said, I already talked about his stats against the current roster. Guys, it's going to wrap it up for today's show. Hopefully you guys do appreciate these, even when we has losing nights. It, it sucks, man, um, to come on here. Well, twofold, right? It sucks to come on here and break down a one in four night like last night. As you can imagine, like we want to show face. I can't just be like a lot of other people being like, I'm sick. Like we, 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 we're not taking a video, doing a video today. And hopefully by the time I return, everyone's forgot about the bad night. I want to show face and make these videos because that's the part that doesn't suck. Like being able to come on here, knowing we have a rock solid community, um, helps with that and it's not like it's something that that pains me or anything like that like I'm blessed to be in the position I am I already uh, I am in so it already you know when I have a losing night it's like hey let's just bounce back from that and continue chugging along you know what I mean um, but nonetheless, guys, I don't mean to ramble at the end of videos like I feel like I always do. You got to give me credit. I'm getting better at at cutting it short, right? Like I could talk about this until I start crying. Um, but nonetheless, we'll catch you guys in the next one, right? Peace out.